Okay, hi John, Mickey and Ornella. So I'm going to create this video to show you what I've come up with regard with with regards to identifying those clusters. So what I've done is I've got a I've taken those those categories that you've sent me for the various uh, resource potential categories. So the number of uh, water uh, water systems per category as identified by this table, and this table comes from that email that I received from you, John. So if we if we tweak this at a later stage, it's going to be easy enough for me to change these categories within the service area grid that I am using to identify these clusters. So anyway, that is the table I'm using, and the idea being uh, that you're only allowed a maximum of 25 water systems per cluster. And let's just go forward and see what an example of that might look like. So in this example, we've got five um, service area cells with vari varying categories. So system uh, or category five is 12 systems. I think these are hand pumps, I think you were saying. So if we add them all up, they come to 25, and then this becomes a cluster of five cells. And then like you said, uh, you could have a, a, a cluster with, with uh, 25 separate cells, all category one, or you could have two category five cells making up one cluster. So that's, that's the idea behind uh, how we're going to identify these clusters. And I'm just going to show you how, or what I'm thinking with regards to the process in terms of, of the QGIS or the steps in QGIS in how we're going to do that. So in order to do that, I am going to need a cluster ID so that I can identify the clusters at a later stage. And then also um, just make sure that I don't name a cell inside two clusters. So we're going to use this cluster ID to identify the clusters once they have been assigned and created. So let's see what that looks like in QGIS. So let's open up this project here. Okay, I don't need this expression. I want to close that. All right. So I'm going to start and work on a province by province basis. So I'm going to start with Rutana. So what I want to do is I want to take this simple project, which has got provinces, commune, the Burundi boundary, as well as a service area grid. And I'm going to isolate all the, uh, the layers or the values for the Rutana province. So I'm going to go into the various layers and I just want to say, Province equals Rutana. Okay, and I'll do the same for the commune as well as the provinces. Okay, so now we've 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 filtered out everything that isn't um, in the Rutana province, and this is what it looks like. Now we do have um, some overlaps in certain areas, and what we've got is we've got the cell will represent the province that it um, that the majority of its area is inside. So that's that's pretty much what we are seeing here. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So what we need to do is the first thing is 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 create a new column and the new column needs to be the number of systems per resource category so this is this column this new column number of systems is based on that table that we're looking at here okay so now that we have that table that attribute table uh, or that new column in the attribute table we'll be able to select out uh, clusters and then we'll be able to see a running total and see when the number of systems gets to 25. And I'll show you how that works now. The other thing I've done is I've created a project or a provincial ID and then I've just used the first two letters of the province and then where there are a number of provinces with the same first two letters, then I've just got a, a phonic for, for whichever province it is. For, for instance, there's uh, Ramanj, which is RM, and Rutana, which is RT, and then uh, Ruyiji is the other one, which is just RU. So there's there's actually three provinces in that instance, all starting with RU. So that's how I came up with that um, phonetic ID. I then will assign a cluster number when I 
start isolating and creating those clusters and then once that has been assigned I will then concatenate these two into a cluster ID and then that cluster ID will basically uh, well it'll it'll show us what is a cluster and what isn't and it'll also be a unique number so we can isolate that cluster all right so one of the things you wanted to do is you wanted to try and stay within communes but definitely within provinces so that's what we're going to do with this class these clusters and that's why I've started with Rutana and by excluding everything that isn't Rutana we're not going to have an issue where we select a, a, um, a cell from a different service area that's in the wrong province okay so what's next I'm going to use this little tool here which is a statistics tool I'm just going to make it a bit bigger and what I want to do is I want the okay first of all I need to make sure I choose the right uh, layer to work with so we're going to our service areas grid and we are going to use the column the new column we've created for number of systems and we only want to see selected features the other thing I've done um, is I've gone into my project properties and I've changed the selection color from yellow because the default color is yellow I have changed it from yellow to pink none of our categories are this pink color so there's going to be no confusion if I select a blue area that is becomes a selection it's not going to be uh, conflicting with category 4 now so, so that's why that's pink so it might look different to yours if you did the same thing okay so that is fine I'm happy with that okay so now what's going to happen is as we start we use the selection tool and I'm going to try and stay within each of the communes and I'm just going to start selecting cells and what you'll see is you'll see the sum of the uh, the number of systems start adding up as we select new cells so I'm going to hold down my shift key and just select these cells okay so I select those cells and you'll see the sum starts going up so it's got it's basically a running total for the the number of systems that are required based on the categories as we've as, as we've assigned them so it's so it's it requires the user to to use their discretion and and choose systems um, that kind of make sense and in choosing these systems I'm not sure maybe you can tell me is the uh, the network or the road access going to determine what will be part of a cluster versus not uh, and also the um, the household positions now if that is the case then what you might want to do in this instance is just turn on the roads and then the households so you if you if you need to make any best guesses as to whether a cell should be inside one cluster or the other you can kind of make that based on uh, a bit more information but for this example I'll just continue and show you uh, how I see this working okay so currently we've got a a total of 14 so we need to choose at least another what is it another 11 so let's carry on going we'll choose some down here now if we chose that one there that takes us to 18 that takes us to 24 now and then if we want to get to 25 we can choose that one so that could be a cluster okay so if that's a cluster that's easy enough for us to assign now so we'll this is the first cluster that we've that we've selected for the Rutana province so I'll just open up the attribute table I'm going to start editing I'm going to use my my field calculator I'm going to only update the selected features I want to update an existing field and it's the cluster number and now this isn't a whole number this is a a string so I can go 0 1 well it needs to be in uh, commas 0 1 and then click OK and now we've got 0 1 and if I want to create the cluster ID from that I just concatenate those two so now I just need to use those same selected features I update the cluster ID and I'm just going to say provincial ID concatenated with the cluster number OK and now we've got RT01 so now that cluster becomes RT01 and we can move on and start selecting other clusters that add up to 25 so let's do another one and what we can do is if we just save this for now we'll save and stop editing 
we'll deselect. So the problem if we just start selecting a new one is we don't know whether it belongs to a previous cluster or not. So what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this layer. I'll stick this up there. I'll rename it to uh, assigned clusters. Or well, you can call it anything you like really. I'll turn it on. I'm going to change the um, the symbology to a single symbol and then I'll just make it a hatch. Let's make it this hatch here. I'll make the hatch black. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just making sure that it's different to what we've already got and I can possibly make that uh, a little a little narrower so I'm going to go to my line pattern fill here and just make this, if I make that two, if I make it one, okay one that looks pretty good so I'm going to apply that and say okay now obviously it uh, it's basically colored them all and in fact I could make that little line thickness just a little thicker okay there we go so now I just want to make sure that if it's already got a name then it, then it is sh then it w will be shown so what I'll do is I'll just come into my source properties query builder I'll clear that and what I'll then do is say okay so now if the cluster is is not is not null so is not null well, let's see if that works apply okay so every every time a new cluster ID is created it will be colored up so now when we create so the, the command there was um, cluster ID is not null so everything else is null so when it is not null it gets colored up as assigned clusters so now what we can do is we can work off the the rest of the Gihara clusters so we go back to this one and nothing is selected at the moment so we can start again and then if we're lucky um, it's 11 18 now where does this one sit is it part of Bukemba it might be worth leaving that as Bukemba uh, these ones okay so now this is where you're going to maybe uh, need to decide what to do is it are you going to this this kind of forms nice forms part of Gihara quite nicely so does that become a cluster um, is it okay to overlap into the uh, commune next door but what you would essentially do is is using your knowledge and, and what you guys are expecting to to do with these clusters or or your um, yeah your your expertise as as the professionals what what are these clusters going to be used for then you can start assigning the clusters using this method so what do you think is that is that what you're looking for I mean look it is a bit of a first stab so maybe you can have a look at this video and then uh, criticize it and let me know um, I'll be speaking to you again on Thursday John so so you can maybe give me some feedback uh, then and see if there's any way to make this better or if you're happy with uh, where I'm going okay so I'll, I'll chat to you later um, till then take it easy cheers